Hey, Rob here, hope you're well. This is my review of the 2020 Specialized Kinevo. The 2020 Kinevo is a badass looking e-enduro mini downhill bike. All new for 2020, the Kinevo is oriented towards hard, aggressive riding. With an all-new build compared to the previous generation, the 24.5 kilo e-bike is no lightweight. With 180mm travel front and rear and long slack geometry, it's radically different from the outgoing model. With a RockShox Boxer triple clamp fork, a super deluxe coil on the rear and 27 inch wheels, it looks like it could take on some of the most brutal terrain. It packs the latest Bros magnesium case motor that pumps out 90 Nm of torque with Specialized's in-house designed 700 watt hour battery. Can it hold up as a do it all brawler or is it just a one trick pony? I've covered over 200 miles over the last month on this bike from cross country to uh, regular trails to bike parks uh, to downhill stuff and I've got a really good idea of how the bike handles, what it feels like, what's good, what's not so good. So what we'll do, we'll take a look around the bike and then go into some rides and I'll tell you whether or not I think this is a banging bike for 2020. So we've got a new aluminium frame, it's got the TCU on the top like the Levo. The boxer fork just looks absolutely beastly and paired with that coil just completes it. The frame designers, what they tried to do, although it doesn't look like the new 2020 pedal enduro bike, they've tried to redesign the axle path so they say it hangs up less, it allows you to blast through the terrain quicker. 800mm bars, it's got the neat little controls on the left hand side. I think it looks really minimalist with these just these two small buttons to change your mode. I'm a big fan of bikes with no screen and this just looks pretty much like a standard pedal mountain bike. There's nothing to get in your way. So how does it ride? Really, really well. I gotta be honest, I was not a huge fan of the old Kinevo, but other than wheel size, there's not really anything else that's the same as the previous generation. Now the first thing I wanna talk about is the geometry. For the first time, I feel that I'm riding a bike that fits me really well. I'm riding the S5, which is the equivalent to an XL. It's got a reach of 520 millimeters, which is pretty long by e-bike standards. And at six foot three, which is 191 centimeters tall, I found it really well suited to my size. In fact, with the long wheelbase and long reach, I've got to say that it's the most stable and confidence inspiring bike that I've ever ridden. And although it handles amazingly well for downhill and bike park stuff just on my local trails, I was so surprised how agile and nimble and sharp it felt. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still a slack, long travel bike so you don't get that same nimble feeling that you do with a shorter travel slightly lighter bike but what I found with this is I'm a rider that prefers traveling at speed and feeling really really stable 
and this is the bike that is offering that to me. It doesn't feel as lively as some other e-bikes that I've ridden and it does require quite a bit more input from the rider to get the most out of it. For example, when you're jumping, you need to really, really push through the travel. You need to get that bike moving around. It does take a little bit more effort to ride. What's it like through tight twisties? I'm in turbo, 800 mil bars. Uh, not much lock on the bars, but I've only actually found that an issue ooh, when I need to turn the bike around. Because of the stop blocks on the forks, it is not lardy. It doesn't make me feel like the bike is too cumbersome to ride. I think these triple clamp forks make your steering feel so precise that it compensates for the bike having a slack long reach. So I don't feel that I'm missing out on too much like nimbleness. In fact, I was pleasantly surprised with how nimble and agile it feels. A lot of it I think is down to the revised geometry, the suspension kinematics, the bike length. When you've got the motor and the slack forks, because you can keep just giving it a quick spin on the motor to propel you forward, many of the disadvantages of having a long travel slack bike are negated because you've got the motor to keep you going. And I actually really enjoyed it on these tight twisty trails. All the other guys are on trail bikes, Levos, those kind of bikes, and I was easily able to keep up. And yeah, it wouldn't be a proper bike test without a fair few crashes. <laughs> Oh. So the more I rode the bike, the more I started to get a feel for it and actually really enjoy every single type of ride that I did with it. I believe, for me, this is a bike that I could take absolutely anywhere. I would be happy to ride a cross-country epic long ride on this bike because it's got the 700 watt-hour battery. And in my tests, when we were riding with Levo owners, it honestly wasn't any different in terms of battery usage. I thought I would get way less than I did out of it, but on a long ride, you're looking 35 to 40 miles, and that's with some pretty aggressive trail riding and a mixture of trail and turbo. I actually do think that this is one bike for it all. Now, with that being said, it's a bike that you need to test because it is a bit heavier. If you don't like heavy bikes and you like nimble agile bikes you'll need to really test the sizing because the reach on it is so different from every other bike that i've ridden a taller rider could prefer a shorter reach and a shorter bike so it's one of those that you really need to get a test on to understand what the right size is for you some downsides there are some negatives to it which i want to share with you but first of all i want to show you my 2020 jersey this is a really good quality jersey that i've been wearing it really helps support my channel take a look at it i'll put a link in the description below i ship them all over the world so the negative stuff on this bike well got to talk about the price it is super expensive it's seven thousand pounds it's however you want to put it it's a lot of money if you look at all the other brands every price seems to be creeping up now we're getting fully integrated 700 watt hour batteries it's expensive man but i wish i wish that we could get to a price point where it was just more accessible for more people because seven grand it's it's a lot of money and i know people will think you can buy a car and you can buy a motorbike for that and i agree you can so it's a negative for me because it's so expensive they do a comp version it is cheaper uh it doesn't come with a triple clamp fork but it's it's a way of getting the kinevo um, at a cheaper price also comes with a 500 watt hour battery and if you look at it compared to the previous generation it's a it's a massive price increase actually the 2019 kinevo expert was five and a half thousand this is seven thousand so arguably it's a completely different bike they could have called it something totally different but it's it's seven thousand pounds it is a lot of money secondly um, i've had a failure on it already now it got wet 
um, whether or not that was me riding it or cleaning it. I had to get the TCU, that's a little thing on the top tube, basically the, the brains of the bike replaced. And you know, if you're not near a dealer, um, it's tricky. I mean, it's covered under warranty and Berkshire Cycles are amazing. They replaced it same day, but you know, it's it failed within a couple of weeks. So it's, it's a negative that the bike failed so quickly. I also found because the seat post is quite steep, you are sat a little bit further forward and you're almost over the motor and the crank. So my knees took a little bit of a, a while to get used to the position and they did start hurting on the first few rides, but it, it, it stopped. I thought it might be an issue, but um, the pedal in position, just seems a little bit different, a little bit more aggressive on the knees. And the rear shock took quite a little bit of adjustment. The rebound knob's in a really difficult place. I struggled with that. So they're the downsides. Price, prone to damage. If you live in a really wet place like the UK, now most of my rides, nearly all of them have been wet. So just, just be careful. And when you're washing it, be careful. Rear shock, like we said already. But for me, the, the, the positives, far, far outweigh those negatives. I have wanted to ride this bike more than ever. I've just looked forward to taking it out. And like I said in the film, I would ride it absolutely anywhere. It's that type of bike for me. Might not be for everyone. Some people prefer a shorter travel, nippy bike that feels light and agile and nimble. For me, I just like going fast and feeling really stable and really safe and secure. And that's what it gave to me. I tackled stuff on this that I've never hit before. I did the biggest gap jumps I've ever done on any bike. And that's because it gave me the confidence. I felt safe on it. I felt really, really secure. And that's why I had such a good time and I wanted to take it out as much as I possibly could. So. I bloody love this bike. I, it's a keeper for me. I, I would choose this over the 2019, 2020 Levo. You need to test one if you can. And by the way, if you're in the UK, give Berkshire Cycles a call. Say Rob Rides EMTB sent you and I'm sure they'll do you a sweet, sweet deal. So where's it rank on the e-bometer? I've got to say, it's one of the most fun bikes I have ever, ever tested on all the trails that I tested it on. Value wise, it's expensive, man. Compared to other bikes, bang for buck, you can get bikes that have a higher spec and are cheaper. Loads of bikes out there, specialized, I don't think ever represents the best value for money. So it's gonna go kind of in line with the Turbo Levo. That expert version is 7,250. It's the most fun bike that I've ridden probably ever. So it's going right up there. It's an absolutely banging bike, I loved it. It's a keeper for me. I want to ride it as much as I can. If you want to hear more on the bike, check out my podcast channel. I've got a bit more of an in-depth chat about the sizing and all that stuff, and I'll catch up with you soon.